Hello and welcome back to the Programming in the Knox Training Series. In this class, we're going to look at dynamic choice and dynamic multiple choice fields or objects that we can place on our data forms. Now we've seen choice fields before. Let's go look at the transaction screen. And here we see a choice field where we have defined the transaction type option or choice. And we've defined two acceptable options, a sale transaction or a purchase transaction. Additional options can be added by the system administrator by clicking the new option button. However, if we are not in administrative mode, or if we're not the administrator, we're just an end user, we have no ability to add additional options to this particular choice field. This is what we call a static choice field. The choices are defined by the admin, and they remain static throughout all of runtime. The other kind of choice field that we can use is a dynamic choice field, where we give the user the option to choose from a predefined group of options, but the user can also create new options at runtime, assuming we've given them that privilege when we set up their user account and their user security protocols. Let's go in and look at the line items for a particular transaction. And let's see how this dynamic choice and dynamic multiple choice field can really enhance the user experience. I'm going to exit administrative mode and we're going to look at this like an end user. I'm going to select a product and I'm going to sell an iMac desktop computer. Now I have some options related to this computer, notably each computer in inventory is uniquely serialized. So I can select which of the three stock items I have I'm actually selling to this buyer via this transaction. We can select a specific serial number and now specifically identify which desktop computer was sold. However, I have the option to go in at runtime and I can create more serial numbers. And now when I go to my transaction screen and I look at the available serial numbers, we see our new option is available. I never went into administrative mode. I never went behind the scenes to access the code or the definition of this choice field. I simply went to another data table that serves as the source of the choices and created new records in that data table. If I were to change the item that I was selling, I would see there's an entirely different set of serial number options because only these serial numbers are relevant to this particular product. A different product has a different group of serial numbers. So this is dynamic not only in the sense that we can control what choices are available at runtime, but it is dynamic also in the sense that it is responsive to other fields in our form. Dynamic choice fields allow us to pick one option amongst the dynamic options that are available. Dynamic multiple choice fields allow us to make many selections among the options. I could go in and create additional options by going to this table, the Select Options table, and creating a new option, a 128 gigabyte memory upgrade. This option, now when I go to my transaction screen, shows up right here in my dynamic multiple choice field. Let's look at how we control what appears in the choice field how it's formatted, and the order in which our choices are presented. Specifically, I'd really prefer that this item be grouped up here with the rest of the memory upgrades. Everything from the color to the icon to the text to the sequenced order of presentation can be controlled by you, the programmer, when using dynamic choice and dynamic multiple choice objects. The process is the same for both the choice and multiple choice field. Let's go in and look at the dynamic values 
that are going to be the choices we see when this choice field is selected by the user at runtime. And this is step one, defining a block of code that says, this is the table, this is the place where you can find all of the choices to be presented in this dynamic choice field. Now we know from our previous classes on relationships and direct relationships that there are a number of ways that we can be in one table and point to or reference a different table. This is a direct relationship. And the way we're building this is we already have a relationship from the transaction line item table to the product table. Here we see the product parent table, and here we see the product serial number child table. And the indirect relationship tells us that we can have a link between this transaction line item and this serial number by virtue of a common relationship to the product. The serial number is a child of the product, and the product is the object of an external reference from the line item. So now that I have this product relationship, I can go into my dynamic choice field and simply point to this table. I can say, here are all of the objects in my transaction line item form. Go to the product object, and then from there, drill down to the product serial number table. So go to the parent that we've already selected in the product field in this form, and then drill down to all of the relevant children of that parent. This direct relationship allows for this dynamic performance. If this is the parent record, we only see the children of that parent. If I change the parent, then I see a different list of children. There's another step that we have to go through to get our dynamic choice field to work. This first step was to say, where are we going to find our choices? What table contains the records that are the choices to appear in this dynamic field? The next step is to define which field we want to appear and how we want that field to be formatted. In this case, we are indicating that from this serial number unit select, from that child table, we want to see this and only this serial number field. We can then go on to define the color and an icon to appear next to that choice if such a value or parameter is provided. At runtime, it looks like this. And again, change the parent, and we'll get a new set of children choices. Let's look at the additional options that we've taken advantage of here in the dynamic multiple choice. Here we see, again, a code statement that defines the location of the choices. And here we see that we have indicated which field contains the names of the choices themselves. But we also have some additional parameters, the dynamic value color and the dynamic value icon. Let's take a look at how we've set up our select options table to take advantage of a number of different options. Here we are in the select options table. And this is where we are going to define the dynamic choices for that multiple choice field. We have a text field that is the name of the option, what we want to appear in the drop down menu that will show up on screen when we go to the dynamic choice or dynamic multiple choice. We have opted to include a color field, which is the color object that's available in Minox. And we are providing an icon field, which is the icon object. And both of those 
can be defined this way in our table definition. Here we see we have color fields and icon fields, and I've simply dragged them in to the available fields or objects panel here in my select options table architectural definition. This design enables us to define a color and an iconic image that will appear when this option appears in our choice or multiple choice field. I have also included this yes or no field, the active field, which I have formatted as a checkbox, indicated to be a required field, and defined yes or true as the default. I'll show you in a minute how this field becomes a very powerful option. Let's go back to our transaction, line item, child record. Here we see the definition of our dynamic multiple choice field. This is that text field that contains the name of our option. This is that color or flag field in the select options table that will colorize this text. And this is the icon field in the select options table that will appear next to the option name in the drop down box. So having defined what appears, the color in which it appears, and the icon that appears next to it, we can get a drop down box that looks like this with the selected icon on the left and the colors defined appropriately. And these are, of course, dynamic. If I were to go to select options, I could change the flag in the icon, and this would result in a dynamic multiple choice dropdown that looks like that. Without going into administrative mode, without changing the code, without entering any syntax, I as a user was able to go in and change the appearance of this particular choice. The next thing I want to do is take advantage of that active inactive field. I'm going to go to that 32 megabyte upgrade option and deactivate it. The record still exists. So any previous line items on previous invoice transactions that included the 32 gig memory upgrade will still be correct. But going forward, now that I have deactivated the item, I'm going to edit the choice field here in my select statement to include this clause. Select all of the records in the select options table but only those records where active is true. We know we just deactivated or made inactive the 32 gigabyte option, and sure enough, that option does not appear. I can go back in at any time at runtime, reactivate it, back to my transaction, and sure enough, the 32 gig option reappears. The last thing I want to do is I want to control the order in which these records appear. This is a memory upgrade. It really should be up here with the other three memory upgrade options. But right now, the default is to simply display the choices in this table in the order in which they were entered into the system. And this is the last option that I entered. I want to change the order in which my options are presented. To do that, I will go to the select options table and add another field, this time a regular choice field called group. And there will be three choices. Adding that new field to the table listing, I can go in and now group my items. Now we see, again by default, the options are presented in the order in which they were entered. And this, the 128 gigabyte memory upgrade, was the last option created. 
but now I can use my group field. And now that I've filled in all of my choices according to group, I can use the group as the field to define the order or the presentation sequence of my choices. Going back to the transaction, line item, dynamic multiple choice field, I add one more construct, order by group, specifically the numeric value of the group. Now, when I look at my choices, we see that all of our memory upgrades, which were in group one, are at the top. My video upgrades in group two are in the middle, and my storage upgrades from group three are at the bottom. So we can control at the code level which records appear by adding the active logical field, and we can control the presentation order using the order by function that's built into the Ninox language. Order by is a keyword function, it's all lowercase, and it's one of the few functions that actually has a space in its name. The space will be forced by Ninox. These dynamic choice fields, both choice and multiple choice, allow us, the Ninox application designer, to give our users more power and capability at runtime by allowing them to create new options or additional choices that will appear in these dynamic choice fields. One last thing to remember, in every other class when we wanted to add an object to this, our Ninox screen form, we could go to the add field shortcut at the bottom of the screen and select from all of our options. The dynamic choice and the dynamic multiple choice objects are not available in this option panel. You must edit the field objects of the table by clicking on the Edit Fields shortcut button at the bottom of the screen and then drag the choice or the multiple choice dynamic option from here at the bottom of our data field or objects panel. In our next class, we're going to look at how we can use constraints to further control the options that appear in our pop-up and drop-down selection windows. I'll see you there. Visit us at www.nioxis.com. Here you can learn about different Ninox solutions. You can get tech support through our Ninox help desk, which is available seven days a week, or you can schedule private one-on-one -on -one concierge sessions for training, or we can help you build your application. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our free Ninox Learning Lab. We do this every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. Central European Time. These free hour-long sessions enable you to learn more about Ninox, features, functions, and solutions. We have open Q&A where you can get answers to all your Ninox questions and you can meet other members of the global Ninox community. We look forward to seeing you there.